Hey everybody, welcome to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. Yes, he is. And we're going to be talking about some Linuxy things. YouTube is letting me know that we're live. We've been live for 10 minutes, bro. Where you been? Anyways, yeah, speaking of that, we do record live every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. We're starting a little bit late, but not too bad. It's been worse. Uh, you can catch that at uh, YouTube.com slash LinuxCast if you want to watch us live. If not, the edited version always goes up on Monday. You can watch the edited version, which will mean better audio and video and all that stuff. So, outside of that, we talk about Linuxy things. And I, I have some things to say before we jump into our week in uh, open source. The last two episodes have pissed off everybody, Tyler. We have no longer any friends. <laughs> like, literally, the, the entire Arch community hates our fucking guts. <laughs> like, like, like <laughs> the, I don't know if you had a chance to see the comments on the, the the edited version of the podcast from last week, but good lord did we piss the Arch people off. Like, even though we said Arch was good, and, and man, I had an entire discussion with a guy about the title that I used, because I just asked, is Arch Linux still a good distro? Question mark. Which is literally the question we asked ourselves and the, what we talked about. So absolutely not clickbait. But we had, had this whole conversation uh, with this guy about clickbait, and then I had to ban him from the comment section because he got mean. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it, it was the whole it was a whole thing. It was really stupid. So we, we just we we're going to take this opportunity to not apologize to the Arch Linux people because we didn't do anything wrong. Okay, um, use which tell you want to use. That's what we always say. That's what we said last week. But anyways, this week's we, our conversation is not nearly as controversial as the last two. So <laughs> uh, we, we're taking a break. Next week we're going to come out with like um, Linux Mint is a useless distro, or maybe uh, oh perfect. <laughs> all Gen 2 users are really weird. <laughs> you know, <laughs> something. I don't know. I'm just off the top of my head. We're going to find somebody to piss off next week. But this year, this week, we calmed it down just a tad. But before we jump into our main topic, we're going to talk about our week in open source. So, Tyler, I assume you have some Nick's things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what have you been doing this week in open source? Well, I've uh, been working on a install script for my flake that way you don't actually have to run through all the actual steps which that's pretty much done i've just got to go back through and i'm going to do some like i've got to write some more a little bit more advanced said said commands for changing certain lines of the options but you'll be able to like run through and this script this script will ensure not only you run everything on the readme but you also change all the necessary options been working on that an update script and i also added a thing called nh which i'll also talk about later in the podcast but nh is really nice it's um it's a nix helper that gives you better output and stuff for commands so i've replaced some of the aliases with my system with that and it just looks much better and makes the output a little bit well a lot more readable so yeah that's i've just been improving my system and also helping a shite ton been doing a lot of support like a lot of support this past week so yeah well that's great i i did manage to try your flake or to install your flake one last time but i didn't succeed i'm doing something obviously very wrong with it uh, I'm gonna try again. I, I'm pretty sure that's in your at least in your initial do documentation. Do you are you able to use your flake with a user that already exists? Yeah. Okay. Then I don't. You can. Then I have no clue what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I'll have to actually sit down and ask, well, ask you so the question. I would just wait because over the co most likely by tomorrow, a new stable branch will be released. And also the readme will be changed to include either running the script in the repo or using a curl command to just instantly run it please, from the repo. Please, please, please tell me that you, you're piping that shit into bash. <laughs> yes, I'll definitely do that. Yeah. That's the greatest yeah. thing. You got to pipe that shit into bash. Just, yeah. <laughs> just you got to do that. That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry. I know it'll upset some people, but also others. It'll be like, oh, this is super simple. Yay. <laughs> and, yeah. 
Well, yeah, I think at this point, I mean, everybody's spent so many years telling you not to pipe anything into Bash. Now you almost have to do it just to, just to be a yep. meme. <laughs> That's the greatest thing. Okay, so I have done many things. So I have also been spending some time in Nix, and I because I'm on the, doing this long term review that I've been working on since October. And I want desperately to be done with this long-term review. Like, really, 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 really bad. Like, desperately want it to be off my computer and to never see it again. Not that Nix is bad, okay? Just, I'm ready to for something new is what is my point. And my, my ish, what's holding me back is Flakes and Home Manager. And he, here's my thing, Tyler. If I were to ask you what a flake was, you'd have an exp explanation what a flake was. You just made a video about it. I watched that video. If you were to ask another person who uses... Damn it, Matt. That's a microphone. Don't hit it. Uh, <laughs> if I were to ask another Nix OS user what a flake is, he'd have another answer for me, and they would not be the same answer. Okay, you could ask 10 Nix OS users what a flake is, and you'd have seven different answers. Now, there'd be a lot of overlap there, which is good, I suppose, because that means at least some of them know what they're talking about. But there'd be enough parts where you're different. It's kind of like that first time I installed Gen 2 and I had you and Josh and Ben and seven other people in my chat room trying to tell me how to install Gen 2. Technically, you're all right. Also, you can't combine those things. And it's kind of that way with Flakes. And I'm it just it's so fucking confusing for someone who doesn't get it. Like I I'm not there Cyrus in the in the Discord says that once you get it, you get it, and then you just kind of can go from there. I haven't had that Eureka moment. I've been using the damn thing for six months. Okay. So uh, I I'm flakes particularly are holding me back from the long career. So I've I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm splitting it up. I'm gonna make a video about Flakes, I'm gonna make a video about Home Manager, and then I will make my long-term review, hopefully towards the end of March, early April, because I, I really desperately want this to be done. And I'm just gonna, just spoilers, the NixOS community is not gonna be very happy with this long-term review. And it's not, be again, not because NixOS is bad, it's just, you are the perfect Nix user, Tyler. You got it, right? You understand it. There are a whole bunch of people who have used Nix for a very long time. They understand it. They're the perfect Nix user. But for me, I don't get it. And if you don't get it, Nix isn't for you. That's 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 the... I mean, I just literally gave away the entire thing. If you don't get the purpose of Nix, and it, here's another thing I would say. If you're just going to use it as a regular distro, it's probably not the best thing to use. Like, I uh, talked about somebody in the in the... Discord said they were using Nix, and then I asked him, "Well, why are you using Nix?" And he said, "Just because it's a good distro." And I was like, "Are you are you using the reproducibility or the ability to do generations?" And he says, "No, I don't want reproducibility, and I'm deleting all my generations." Like, then why are you using Nix? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. I mean, you can, but it just it, it's it's like buying a Lamborghini and then never driving fast. You know what I mean? It's kind of, it's just the way I kind of look at it. Like it's, it's yeah, well, I gotta be honest. Your perspective was my perspective. The first time I checked out Nix, I was like, it's nice, but all of the nice features about it, I don't need, or I'm, a, I'm really interested in like making use of. So I was like, eh, I mean, nah, not, not today and moved on. Well, that's but, why, that's why I think, I don't think that's a wrong perspective. Well, I, I, like I said, I think it's, it's very much a distro, you know, this is going to be a, com a comparison that makes a lot of people angry, but Nix is kind of like Emacs. If you get Emacs and you can tailor your workflow around everything that Emacs does, you're going to fall in love with Emacs. It's going to be the best thing you ever use. If you just use it as a Vim replacement, you're not going to see the point because it, you're not using what makes Emacs special. Right, and if you're just using Nix to web browse, you're not using the features that it comes with, or you know, the reproducibility, the ability to do the generations, the flakes, the home manager, all that stuff that goes along with it. It just feels like you're ignoring the potential of Nix, and that's where I'm at. Like, I, I think part of it, actually, the biggest part of it, is just that I don't get 
flakes. I've had too many different explanations over what they are. I've had, you know, I, I'm just frustrated with the whole, whole situation. But anyways, well, hold on, hold on. What? Give me two examples of two different explanations that two, you got. Okay. For flakes. So I have yours, which is very much a the ability to basically use someone else's configuration for Nix and install that, right? And then there's another one that I've heard is basically some, them being able to use it as a alternative to like a repository. So you have, if you wanted to install a- Wait, hold on. My explanation of Flakes was not that it is just an easy way. Like if you watch the video, my whole explanation was what you're about to say with well, no, 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 you, you mentioned, no, 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 hold on, you didn't let me finish, <laughs> you, you mentioned the Git repository, which is the, the, I told you, seven different people, that have different, they'd have overlaps, right, they all mentioned the Git repository, but one person says it's just for applications, you're using it for configuration, and those always, those, one's user files, one's binaries, is the way that I look at it. And I, I, I know I'm I know I'm all wrong about it, Tyler. That's the whole <laughs> fucking point, is I don't get it. Yeah. Eventually, I'll get it. The, the, my biggest problem is I can't have people explain it to me. I, I, I've come to the conclusion that I can't have you sit down and say, hey, Matt, this is a flake, because I still won't get it. I have to, <laughs> there has to be somebody out there who, <laughs> apparently listening to it through my ears isn't working, I have to actually go read this in like a documentation somewhere. I, I've tried to find some, but the, the flake documentation is like half a page long. I'm not sure if I was looking at the right, the right documentation it might've been. Yeah. When you search flakes and find the Nix OS page on it. Yeah. That's the right page. It'll explain to you the sections of it and how it works. Yeah. A anyways, just needless to say, I don't get it. I'm working on it. But the other thing, the other thing, the last thing I want to say is a little bit of a, of a public service announcement. Do not ever, and I'm talking to everybody, ever fucking mess with fan control on your computer. Just never do it. <laughs> it it's a it's a horrendous idea. So, and I, and I blame Nix for this too because, <laughs> and, and there's no way it's actually Nix's fault, but it happened at the same time I started booting back into Nix on this PC because I always do the way I do a long term review is I install it first on my main PC on a separate hard drive. And then I get it all set up and then I completely ignore that hard drive because what I want to, what I want to do is test how it, how a distro works after you haven't updated it for a long time. So like when Arch, you know, if you go a long time without updating, a lot of times it breaks. I always, that's why I do this test, right? And then I use Nix on my other computers as it, in a more daily driver situation. So I was at the point where I was going to go test to see how Nix would do after a long period of not actually using it. And it worked flawless. They worked fine. Not, not a single issue. It was awesome. But for whatever reason, when I booted into Nix, my fans started running full blast. And I was like, what's going on here? Because my, my fans are always controlled by my BIOS. It has the speed control in the BIOS. It shouldn't have anything to do with Linux at all. And I was like, what the hell is going on? So I booted out of Nix and back into OpenSUSE, which is my, ma my main thing. And still, my fucking fans were just... sound like an aircraft carrier. It was really stupid. Um, not cl I, I went into the BIOS, changed to the silent version of the, the speed curve, or the, the fan curve. And that didn't ch that changed it a little bit, made him actually finally decide to spin down. But it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be because... You know, I, normally I want it to be fairly silent when I record a video. So uh, I Googled it. Like, I'd never done this before. And I was like, is there a way in Linux to control fan control? And I was like, you found out that it's there's a, a binary that comes along with LM sensors that called fan control. And you can actually change the fan control with a configuration file. Don't ever fucking do it. You're never going to get it right. Leave it automatic. It doesn't matter. You, you, you can spend hours upon hours just fine tuning up a percentage down a percentage up a t up a degree down a degree you're never going to get it perfectly right I, I at this point right now i have it so that the temperatures are at least right fans are still much louder than they used to be and it's driving me bonkers but i <laughs> i'm gonna have to go back to the auto the automatic there's like an automatic profile or whatever with fan control and maybe that'll fix it but yeah so that's what <laughs> I should use Windows. I should just use Windows as well. <laughs> <my top two. laughs> yeah, we'll uh, get you all sorted out, dude. It's fine. 
Okay, anyways, that is what we've been doing this week in open source. Now we're going to move on to the main topic. Now, Tyler, you chose this main topic, so I'm going to let you do the lead-in for it. And while you're doing that, I'm going to turn my heater off because it's now way too hot in here. So uh, take, <laughs> take us away. So for this one, why do we hot distros? Kind of a general question, but one that's really aimed just to start a conversation over, you know, what's the main reasons we do it? And I don't think we should have a discussion over whether or not it's beneficial or you should do it because you can, you can debate that till you're blue in the face, but like, what's the main motivation for continually trying out something new? Like what's yours? ADD. I, 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 I mean, <laughs> That's probably the most honest response <laughs> I mean, anyone's ever given. It really is. I mean, it's just absolutely is. So when I was a distro hopper, I consider myself not a distro hopper anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm a reformed distro hopper. I, I have my 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 200 day chip uh, that I'm no longer uh, distro hopping. But the thing is, is that when I was a distro hopper, the reason I switched most often was because of boredom. And I wanted something new. I enjoy, on a mental level, the process of wiping my hard drive clean, installing Linux, setting everything up, re-ricing my window managers, installing all the window managers. I enjoy that process to the point where I could be paid to do it and be perfectly happy with my life. Like if some if somebody if somebody would say, hey Matt, start a business installing Linux for people, I would do that because I would be very happy to do it. It'd be fun. I wouldn't want to support them once they started using Linux. That'd be hor horrifying. I don't want to actually talk to people. No, I just want to install the operating system over and over and over again for whatever reason. It's a stupid thing, I understand. But that's just the way that it, is, it feels. Like I enjoy that process. And for the longest time, many times, that's the reason why I would hop is because I would want to go through that process again. And then I'd use it for a little while and then I'd get bored with what I was having and then I'd move on. Other times, it was laziness because if something would go wrong, it's much easier to distro hop than it is to solve a problem, especially stupid problems. So... Audio sucks on Linux. Whenever audio would be terrible, there was a period of time, Tyler, you remember, when Pipewire hated everyone's guts. Like, literally everyone's guts, it doesn't matter. Every single time they did a Pipewire update, something was wrong. You know, either they were treating your outputs as inputs, you know, they were having things wrong. It didn't matter. There was hundreds of different problems, and every time they did an update, they broke the entire audio stack. My dumbass, instead of, you know, either rolling back to the previous version of Pipewire or not updating it at all or using a distribution that didn't use Pipewire, I'd always hop. Like, oh, this would give me a good opportunity to go use a different distro and see if audio actually works over there, which of course it didn't, especially if it used the same version of Pipewire, dumbass. That's the reason why I would always, those are the two reasons why, ADD and boredom and laziness. Those are the two reasons why I hop. But if we're talking about other people... I think that there are many different reasons. Some of them, I, I think that especially when you're new, this is this is a big thing. I know this happened to me, but when you're new, you don't understand that it, how easy it is to use a different desktop environment on a distro. So if you install like Ubuntu Budgie, which is my first main distro when I first came back to use Linux for full full, full time. I didn't understand that I could go install GNOME or I could go install KDE on that version of Ubuntu. I didn't really figure that out until much later. So I figured if I wanted to try KDE or I wanted to try GNOME or I wanted to try XFC, I'd have to hop distros. And I think that a lot of people don't understand that distinction where you can install desktop environments very, very easily, but they think that you can't. So you have to install a different distro with that particular you know, version of the desktop on it that you want to use. Well, your point, like you're saying laziness, but it's really just avoiding fixing a problem. I... I mean, I've been that person. Like I've, I've hopped solely because something broke. I don't know how it broke. I don't know why it's broke. I don't want to find out. So, mm, I mean, X distro has been looking kind of interesting. Let's go give it a shot. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I wouldn't describe that as laziness. Like, 
I may just, I may just be, you know, trying out, like really you just want an excuse to go try out something new and you're using this as an excuse, but either way, like however you want to describe it, like, I think that's a pretty common thing. Even if you've been using Linux for a really long time, you, you know how to fix problems. Just when something comes up, you're like, good time to switch. I've been, or at least give it a shot. Like, it seemed nice. I, to me, I, I really, I really have only ever switched just to f- see what something is like on my system. Cause I think that's more, I've never been the person that's very interested in running something in a VM. I'm not very interested in figuring out, you know, how does something look or how does it run inside of a virtual machine? Like I want to know, does it, does it actually run well on my hardware? Do, is there any problems that's going to have with my monitor setup? Like all of those kind of things are the questions I have for different distros. And that's normally why I'll check them out, see them out. See, our arguments for this are well-founded and we've had, we have this experience, but it doesn't explain the biggest flaw in all, all of what we've talked about so far is that we've both went back to distros that we know give us problems. So yours, you love, you love Gen 2. You know, you, you, you've used Gen 2 many different times over and over and over again. Same thing with Arch, really. Like, Josh is the same way, I, I think, in, in many ways. He keeps going back to different distros that he's he knows don't necessarily work for him just because he is a stubborn fool. Arch Linux doesn't like you, Josh. Just learn 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 it. <laughs> you know, it's just you know, the thing, right? But I And I, for the longest time, that wasn't really me, even though I did return to distros. It's just mine was more of a rotation between distros that I enjoyed. So... The thing is, I've never been a the, the oddest thing amongst my my distro hopping journey is that Ubuntu was never really a thing for me. Like, I would use Ubuntu once in a while, but it was never like I was never really happy there. And because of that, I would I would avoid it for the most part. It was always Fedora or you know, everyone's, you know, I tried Linux Mint for a little while. I suppose that's based on Ubuntu. I used Debian for a while then, and then was back to Fedora. And then, it, you know, I used Arch for a long time. And then, and then it was, uh, this, the stupid, <laughs> this is the stupidest thing, Tyler, is that w- during my distro hopping journey, instead of just realizing the, that they were all based on Arch, I would rotate between different Arch based distros. Like, it's literally the same fucking distro, but I'd go to from Arco to Endeavor, to Garuda, to you name it. I used all of them. You know, Manjaro for a long time. You know, I would just rotate between them. Like, it was literally just reinstalling Arch over and over and over and over again. And <laughs> for no particular good reason, because they all do the exact same thing in the exact same way. I mean, for the most part. Well, eh. They might have their own ways of approaching something, but they all do the exact same thing in, the, in that they make Arch easy to use with a certain rice by default it's like okay that's not a degradation of what they do at at all that's just if you're going to bounce between them all in a rotation and like do it for a long time like at the end of the day like you're not really exploring all that linux has to offer you're really just changing your theme yeah, for the week. yeah. that's exactly true and it get it got it got way worse when I discovered Arco and Archcraft because both of them allowed you both of them have you know Arco has a ton of different window managers most of them no one's ever heard of like they have one called Dusk nobody's ever heard of the it's it's basically a DWM fork or basically it's just a DWM rice is what it is. Uh, so that's all it is, right? It's, it's DWM with some patches. That's exactly what it is. But it's, it's a version that you can install. It actually have an ISO of that thing. And it's a thing like ISWM, FVWM, and all these things, right? And I wanted to try them all. And when I first started using Arco, Eric hadn't introduced the Arco Linux tweak tool yet. So it wasn't as easy to install the other window managers as it was is now because now you can do it on an installed system you just 
open up the tweak tool and install it and you're off ready to go you'd have if you wanted to do it before you'd have to do it from the installer so i kept i kept reinstalling arco linux over and over again just so i could choose a different window manager that they offer it's the stupidest thing it's like it's the biggest waste of time but also i kind of this is stupid i miss it a little bit because it was a everybody knows this if you you installed linux almost certainly you're going to encounter some kind of problem like something along the way when you're in when you install something you know your, your audio is not going to work your bluetooth is going to be wonky whatever there's you're going to have to go search for an alternative to a different program because maybe it's not available in the repository something is going to be different right and that process of setting it up was always something that drew me in and, and it's just i go back to this often it's just like sometimes i miss setting that up to the point and, and troubleshooting those problems and, and stuff but also there's a something to be said about just sticking on the same distro for a long time you know it's not something that i really saw until i found open and i think that at the end of the day everybody kind of goes i mean i say everybody that's a broad generalization but the vast majority of people go through this process of hopping you know hop 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 and then eventually they find the one you know the 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 pretty girl that you know you're going to spend the rest of your life with and yeah. it takes sometimes sometimes you got to be a man hoe and and hop, <laughs> hop, hop 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 between them and 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 eventually you'll find your one that was me with open Sousa. it took a long time for me to find open Sousa, you know and i didn't even amongst all my distro hopping i didn't ever really try open Sousa until you know fairly recently so I think eventually everyone finds their one. And someone said, so there is no plug and play distro. And I don't think that was the point that you were making at all was that there's not distros out there that just will work for you. It's your mo. You said it was a general generalization. And so it's not always true, but for most people, most likely you're going to end up popping around and then finding one that you really like the most. And then sticking with that one. And I don't, I don't think that's wrong at all. I think that's literally what most of us have done. We've tried out a few different things. And I think it's the same thing too. Like with grocery shopping, you do the same thing. You don't walk into the store and immediately buy the most expensive item. Like in a category, you go in there, you try one thing that's like the cheapest or whatever. Like, you know, you try that new thing. You're like, Eh, wasn't too good. And if you get anything else, you're going to get different options. And then you're going to find one that you like the most to stick with that. Now, if you're like me and cheap, that means the cheapest item, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, every time I make that generalization that everyone distro hops, I, there's always two or three people that come around. Like, you know, I started on Ubuntu and I'm still on Ubuntu 20 years later. Like, first off, broaden your horizons, bro. Like, seriously, <laughs> like, like those, well, I mean, it's not a problem that you're doing that, but also that's also not typical. Yeah. Like, like mo most people try out other stuff. Yeah. And that's exactly. Most people don't, aren't lucky enough for everything to work for them on the first try. And most people, when they switch to Linux, aren't skilled enough to fix the problems. So usually distro hopping for them, at least is absolutely easier than, trying to find especially um, linux is really old now right it's well over 30 years old and if you're like most people probably start on ubuntu and they if they end up having a problem then they google how to solve that problem and the biggest pr benefit ubuntu has is that there's a ton of people out there who have used it over the years and there's a ton of documentation out there the, also the biggest downfall downfall of ubuntu is that there's a ton of people the, that have used it and there's a ton of documentation out there because if you go search for a problem on Ubuntu, you can find a Stack Overflow or Stack Exchange, whatever thing from like 2009, and maybe that solution will still work. Maybe it won't, but just because it exists doesn't mean it necessarily will. So I mean, it, it, I think that for a lot of people, hopping is just you know much easier a lot of the times. Also, I mean, we, we wanted to talk about reasons why people hop, other than why we hopped. Some of it is just that the package availability, I, I was going to say package managers matter, but really it's package availability because not every distro has every package that you want. At least when I first started Linux, that was absolutely true. It's much different now because Flatpaks and Snaps exist. 
But I, I think that if you go to a distribution and it, and it doesn't have what you're looking for in terms of package availability, easy package availability, I, I think that, you know, it, it, it's much easier than to think, well, you know, maybe that distro over there has more applications that I can use out of the box without having to jump through hoops. And, and I think that's, a, that's another big one is package availability, software stuff. I mean, that, no, I would say that's definitely true. There's a lot of people that have, that have gotten into Nix and been like, okay, I'm not interested in the Nix programming language, but I am interested in the fact that the, it's not just like a whole separate repo or something that has a ton of packages in it. It's the main repo, like the main repo has got like 80,000 plus packages to, to a lot of people like package availability is definitely a factor in what they choose or what makes them interested in something, um, which I'm glad you said that's not as true now with Flatpak and stuff. Cause I mean, Flatpak app images snaps have definitely changed people's perspective on whether or not that really matters. I mean, for most things, flat packs are where the actual official vendor, like vendors package is going. So you probably just want to use that anyway. So it doesn't matter. But again, that's not always true. So I, I, I think it's absolutely right that flat packs have changed everything, but people don't even really think of it that deeply, right? It's just very much people want. It's one of the reasons why you and I had such a problem with, with elementary OS, right? They started to use flat pack and flat hub, but then they only did a portion of it, right? They had to approve every application. So when you went into elementary OS 6 or whatever it was, you didn't even have access access to things like LibreOffice or Firefox. You had to enable that beyond that, right? And I think that flat packs have indeed changed, not flat, just not just flat packs, but snaps. And uh, Ryan in the chat mentioned app images. Go away. Go away with your <laughs> app images. Um, nobody, nobody outside of nerds actually use app images. Although, <laughs> here's the stupidest thing. Actually, I brought them up. But yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, the funny thing is, is I hate app images, but I have to use one because my Kden Live is broken, and I don't know how to fix it. So I've had to use the app image of Kden Live to actually, you know, use Kden Live. And Serves you right. <laughs> God, I hate I hate app images with a fucking passion, dude. Like every <laughs> so. I'm much too lazy to figure out how to add it to my Rofi, right? I, I know that there is a way to add it to my Rofi. I know it's very easy. I don't care, okay? So, because I'm a stubborn fool, every time I want to open up Caden Live, I have to bring down a scratch pad, do dot slash Caden Live and the rest of the nonsense, and then it will open up Caden Live from the terminal. It's just the stupidest. It's the stupidest way to have to open up a a. a, a package or application i know there are ways around it i know there are easy ways around it these days that's the way you used to have to do it but i'm doing it in protest that's the reason why but anyways the the the, the, the whole point is that snaps and flat packs have made it so made it easier for developers because they only have to package things once and it's available basically everywhere but also it's made it easier for consistency so it used to be like when you used to use Arch, and when I used to use Arch, one of the things that was always the most infuriating was that the version of OBS that comes in Arch is different. They don't compile it the same. They take a lot, a lot of the stuff, right? You know, it doesn't, it didn't have web docs for the very longest time. It, it took a long time to get the YouTube integration, all this stuff, right? They, they are always way behind on that kind of stuff because they want to, for whatever reason, compile the minimalist version of OBS. And then when you went to Debian, you'd have a different experience. When you went to Ubuntu, you have a different experience. When you went to Fedora, you'd have a different experience. Every single one of these would have a different version of OBS, and every OBS is, is slightly different, right? With Flatpaks, you just download the Flatpak of OBS, and it's going to be the same on Ubuntu. It's going to be the same on you know, Fedora and Arch and all this stuff, and that's another benefit that this has kind of led to. And I think that it... I think that in a lot of ways, and, and I'll, once you get past your initial curiosity of what you want to use, and you, I think that flat packs make it much easier to both hop and to stick around because it's not because you don't have to think about what packages you have available. You don't have the motivation. You don't have that motivation to hop. 
So you can't say, well, I can't, I don't have the right version of OBS because you have that version of OBS on your distro, no matter what distro you've chosen. So it, flat packs have both made it easier to switch because you can use the same version everywhere, no matter what district you're on. But also, it's, it's removed one of those things of reasons why you'd switch. Now, obviously, the other reasons still matter, but I think that in in many ways that one software availability thing, flat packs have kind of and snaps have have solved that problem for a lot of people. So I don't know. I I still think when it comes to a distro option, it plays a role as to whether or not you're going to need to use one of those or whether or not those are pre-installed flat pack and snap. So, I mean, so it's still like, no matter what you're, how you're going to get packages will always matter to some extent and to some people when it comes to what they choose on Linux. So, I mean, and, and also too, like if I, if I wanted to play around a lot with flat packs, I could totally see myself just installing Fedora only because I know that's going to be flat pack Haven. Like, obviously same same thing with like, if I wanted to mess around with snaps a lot, I'd probably use Ubuntu just because I know I'm not going to find anything weird with snap somewhere else. Granted, I shouldn't period, but I mean, I could easily see that being a good reason for hopping and you know, doing something over there yeah i i have images are a necessary evil <laughs> i'm sorry I just, I just read that line I, I didn't read any further than that but that would just crack me up i was like oh i mean i wouldn't call them evil well in a, in a way they do provide a third backup options for when nothing else works which is the reason why i'm using the one app image that i'm using what they desperately need to do with app and like this is just a complete fucking tangent but app images would be fantastic i think if all uh, all they did was when you clicked on them from your file manager they installed automatically they they there was like a script that ran on top of it or whatever that automatically put a desktop file in wherever it needs to go and you're done like it just works right i know that i, I understand josh there's a tool that does it. I don't want a fucking tool. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't, like I, it should do it. It should just, like, if you're going to like, here's the thing. If your packaging format is essentially the exact same, exact same thing as an executable binary on windows, just make it run exactly like that. Have it place a desktop file and let it do all of that by default. There also, there's no way that you could tell me that this is impossible or hard to do. Like you already have dependencies for app image. So like make one of those dependencies, a daemon that does this whenever an app image is executed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are probably many ways of, of doing it, but they just don't. And, and you know, that's the developer's prerogative. That's fine. But that's also the reason why I just refuse to use them as much as possible because it just, like I, I kind of, it's one of the reasons why I want Flat Seal on Flatpak to be a dependency. Like every, everyone should have Flat Seal installed. It's an absolute necessity if you're going to use a bunch of Flatpaks. You should have it installed. This should be the same thing. It's, it's, there are having a separate tool that you don't have on hand. It's like I'm going to pick on the GNOME guys. It's like having the extensions manager on GNOME not installed. Like. This is a thing that it, for a lot of people is a, is the first thing that they install. And if you don't have it pre-installed, that means that they have to know that it exists and they have to go ex install it and then they can do the, their work. But it, it, that for whatever reasons we, we've made the, uh, some of some people are going to say, well, you know, it's a security issue, you know, because they don't, you know, they don't want to have access to your 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 path or whatever and you know i can i guess i can understand that but it's just it, it bugs me because in an, you've used a mac before and i've used a mac before 
one of the coolest things about Mac is the way they install most applications. Opens up a file, shows you a, a shortcut to your applications file, you drag the icon into your applications file, and bada bing, bada boom, it's fucking installed. That's the best thing ever. That's the way everybody wants to install an application. Nobody wants to see a fucking wizard. I mean, seriously, if you ever, if you're on Windows, you, and even to this day, you install like a printer driver window, it look, printer driver wizard, it looks like it was developed in 1995. Like, it just does. Nobody well, wants Also, can we talk about the fact that most of these windows open up in like an 800 by 600 pixel, like window, and then they want to give you their EULA yeah. in there. <laughs> that's like a 42 page document that you're supposed to read through inside of that tiny window. And like, uh, come on. The, the worst ones are where you have to manage to get your cursor over the scroll bar because it will not let you continue until you scroll all the way to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so first off, I'm smart enough to understand. I'm not going to read it. Just because you forced me to scroll to the bottom doesn't mean I've read this thing. It just means that I'm smart exactly. enough to use a fucking scroll bar. You know? <laughs> it's just it's the stupidest thing ever. But but uh, on Max, the thing is, is that the the that ability is to tra take the binary, shove it in a path somewhere, and then automatically it shows up everywhere applications are. That's really cool. And App Images had that potential because that's what they are they're just an executable binary that you click on and it runs all they needed to do was create the ability to drag that somewhere and have it run that'd be awesome but which ironically it, this we are describing the way linux and unix works you have folders where binaries go and then they're accessible everywhere like this should this should not be rocket science and also, we as a community should not have to. It is weird that we have to ask for it. And it's about time that we don't have to ask for it anymore. And it's just the way it works. Because that makes sense. Like, have me put app images in a location. And then the app images are just accessible. Yeah. If they had done that, they would have won the game. Like, literally, that's the... That's exactly... Okay, so you wouldn't have to deal with snaps and their proprietary nonsense and loopback machines. You wouldn't have to deal with any of that. On Flatpak, you wouldn't have to deal with all of, you know, the, having six different versions of Mesa installed as a Flatpak just because all of them use a different version. Because app images are the contained thing that you want to just click on and use. They would have won the game. Like, everyone would have used... It would have been the package format to beat and they failed it's it's a complete i understand guys that there are app image loyalists out there very very much fervent believers that app image is the best format and the thing is is you just might be right but because they missed the opportunity to do it in the right way you're forever going to be in third place barely used and and that's just that's just sad because like i said i think i think that the general concept is fantastic. The execution was shit. Yeah, it is very sad because I mean, they'd have they'd have an uphill battle. Let's say they fixed all of what we were talking about and it functioned beautifully, beautifully tomorrow. Do you know how much popularity they're up against? Like, even if they did that, it would probably take a lot for people to want to go back because people have gotten used to now using flat seal and the loopback devices on snap like sure your your format fixes a lot of that and it's better but i mean we've already gotten used to it yeah well and then i I mean they would have had a hard t harder time than i'm probably making it out to be just simply because we know that fedora and ubuntu weren't going to adopt them fedora has flat packs and that's their baby and they're going to promote flat packs and then, you know, Canonical has snaps, they were going to do snaps. But the thing is, is that the community oftentimes decides, you know, what wins in the end. And they, you oftentimes, like, if System D had been horrible when it came out, like, okay, so it was horrible when it came out. If System D hadn't been well developed and well adopted by other distros, it, it, would never have become a thing like it would have just been a fedora and red hat thing and that would have been where it is but because it was adopted by distros outside of it it became the norm right 
it's the same reason why Flatpak has kind of won, because other distros have taken it and actually started to use it. And App Image could have been that thing, and then Flatpak would have just been a Fedora thing, right? It, it, you could have seen things like M MX Linux or, or, you know, maybe Arch or whatever. It wouldn't have been Arch because there's no way Arch is leaving the AUR behind. You know, other distros could have used App Image as their thing. And especially the ones that are very anti corporation, the ones that don't want to have to rely on Flatpak because it's basically developed by Red Hat, that don't want to rely on Snap because it's done by. You know, canonical, right? App Image could have been that thing if it had been good. So, like, okay, so there, there are people talking in, like, Josh keeps mentioning App Image D. I will remind Josh that App Image D did not exist when App Images first came out. And that's what we're basically talking about is when they first came out. I mean, we understand that there are tools now, but that's like releasing a, a, a you know, it's, it's like, having a car but not having the key of it until 10 years down the road you know it just sits there you can't use it you know yeah so we let you buy a car for 50 percent off right now but i give you the keys in six years like it's just like well i still spent 50 percent on a car <laughs> like, like, can't a, use like it i all. own it it looks pretty but you can't use it. it's just a big fancy paperweight you know it's just like it and it's not i mean it's obviously not that bad you could use app images but it was a tedious process and it's just you know I I think that the reason why I always talk about this is is that there there's a part of me that was a Mac user back in university that had that experience of dragging the binary to the folder and it's like that that experience say all the shit you want about Mac there's many different things you can say about Mac back then they didn't have the privacy thing you didn't have to worry about App Shield or whatever literally you could download whatever the fuck you wanted and put it wherever you wanted like that's the way it worked I remember guys i'm old so it doesn't i know it doesn't work exactly this way anymore there's a lot of privacy and security shit that goes in the, in the middle of it but at, at, at that point you could take this thing drive it to that and, and i had that experience and I, every time i see a flat pad or an app image i ha i remember that experience like this could have been that but it's not therefore it sucks and and then pro bono or whatever his name is he hates me <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was an interesting. <laughs> we we had a little bit of a divergent there, Tyler. Uh, we a little bit of a tangent, if you will. Uh, but I think that's okay. Uh, Great. Great. Yeah. Without tangents, the life would be much harder. I, I, I truly believe that. All right. So, I mean, do we have anything else to add on to this? The last thing that I want to say is that uh, you should. Uh, we we said at the beginning that we weren't going to say this, that whether you should or not. But I should. I, I still want to say. It. You should distro hop. Don't be the person who just finds your distro right away. That's fucking boring. Don't be boring. Go distro hop. Try other some other distros. And then if you Also, this this section right here of Matt talking, this is definitely not opinionated at all. Like this is just objective fact. You need to go do this now. Just 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 uh, I understand if you if you if you got it's Here's a here's a stupid metaphor. Have you ever do you ever watch HGTV like the House Channel, Tyler? I mean, I've got family members that do. Okay. I don't. All right. So yeah. if you ever there's there's a show on there called Love It or List It. Okay, and, and basically the idea is that one, there's two people that are like the hosts of the show, and the, the one will remodel your house. The other one's a real estate agent, and they're trying to show you a house that you could move into. And at the end, you have to choose whether or not to move out of your house that's been newly renovated or stay there in the newly renovated house. And most people will obviously stay in the house that they were already in because now it's basically a brand new fucking house. Why would you ever move? And that's the whole point of this is that, you know, it's really hard if you found your distro, the first distro you use, if it's really, really good and it works everything, Bluetooth works, audio works, it has all the applications you want. You know, the package manager is something that you enjoy. All of this stuff, there's a lot of support. The community is fantastic. That perfect situation, if you found yourself in it, it's really hard to move away from it, but you should. You absolutely should if, if, if that's your first experience. And the reason why is just because something is perfect doesn't mean that there's something not more perfect out there. Also, it gives you something to compare it to. It's, it's, I've never, going back to the manhole thing from earlier, like if you found your one person that you, you fell in love with in like high school or middle school or whatever, you know, that's great. I'm happy for you, but you don't know what you're missing out on if you actually didn't 
float around a little bit, you know? You should, you should break up with that person, float around the field a little bit, and then go back just, you know? <laughs> there's a reason. probably there's, the there's, worst there's a reason, I've ever heard, there, but I love There's it. a reason why Matt's single at this moment. I think everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh, that's the best that's the best thing ever oh come on no no you losing power the, the lights just fucking flickered hopefully hopefully i don't lose anything maybe it's time for us to start wrapping up <laughs> yeah clear blue fucking skies out there and it's gonna do that shit living in bfe anyways they had just dating advice 101 with the linux cat <laughs> God, there was that show back in the 90s with um, Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. God, nobody's going to remember that. Um, I, I could I could be the Dr. Drew in that situation. <laughs> 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 it's like the, the, I don't remember the name of the show. It's like Love love Shack or Love, the Love Show. Some I don't know. It was like Love After Night or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it was that. I think it was like that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good look. Yeah. I know Dr. Drew. I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, he's, still, he's actually still around. He's, he's, he, he's actually a big proponent of Odyssey, which is really fucking weird. <laughs> like a small ass fucking world anyways yeah god damn it this is like the fourth time i've hit my microphone today i'm i apologize for that hopefully nick can edit that shit out <laughs> uh, love line that's the name yeah okay <laughs> really fucking old guys all right anyways let's go ahead and move on to the last part of the show no 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 <laughs> Now we've had our hilarity. Anyways, the last part of the show is the nuggies of the week. So every week we we talk about an application or a tip or a trick or something like that that we can share with y'all. Usually it's an application, and this week is no difference. We call them nuggies of the week because I've been bullied into it. So Tyler, good lord, I just hit the fucking microphone again. This is ridiculous. Anyways, Tyler, your nuggie of the week. Mine is N H, which is. It's short for yet another Nix helper. And it's, I've just replaced a lot of my like flake update, flake rebuild commands with it. It just is like kind of a wrapper for pseudo Nix dash commands. So it, and the, the main reason you would want it is it gives you much cleaner output in the terminal. I, in, inside of our show notes, I did link to it, but uh, just for, everyone inside of the live stream right now i'll link i'll post a link to it but if you're using nix highly recommend trying it it makes errors much easier to read the actual relevant information from that error it's just overall it's a it's a big improvement to actually using nix i don't know why nix doesn't just make this the way the output is done it's way better and probably should be the way it's done, but eh, it's great. So yeah, that's, that's my thing of the week. Nice. I've been playing around with a lot too. Okay. It's nice. Mainly today. I've been watching someone else play around with it for a week and being like, yeah, I should add that. That looks really nice. <laughs> cool. All right. So my nuggies have been very much themed the last three weeks or so. I've, I've talked about this. I've been reading, I, I read a ton of books every year. Now, I'm not some crazy person. Like, if you get on Book Talk or BookTube, you hear that some of these people who read like three or 400 books every year. Not that crazy. I, I, I read 40 to 50, sometimes 60 books a year. It, it's it's a reasonable amount, four or five books a month. And it, you know, every once in a while, I'll read a little bit more. And, and it's great. But like I said, I ran out of space and I've been doing the digital thing. So I've been... <laughs> It turns out there are, t uh, other than Goodreads, like I've known about Goodreads for a very long time, because it's been around for a long time, but there are a ton of different applications that you can use to basically track your reading. Now, I, there's a couple of them that I'm going to be talking about, but I want to try them first. There are a couple open source things that you can use on Linux to track your reading, uh, some self-hosted stuff. So I'm going to try those out before I recommend them, but there's one on iOS that I've been using. It's on Android 2. It's called Bookly, and it's pretty good. It's not the best one that I've tried, but I've been looking for ones that has features. So the one that I was I recommended last week called was called Bookshelf, and it was very minimal on the statistics. Bookly has way more statistics, has more fuller and more uh, usable graphs and stuff. So I, I, I prefer this one over the one that I talked about last week. I will also say that it's cheaper if you want to get the pro version than a lot of the other things that you can try. Uh, 
I, I will also say, though, that if you use both Android and iOS, the subscription is not transferable, which is just the most idiotic thing I've ever seen in my life. But whatever. So, yeah, Bookly is, is really good. Like I said, there, there are a couple open source things that I'm, I'm going to try out. That I, I asked for recommendations on Mastodon yesterday or the day before for open source ways to track your reading. Basically, just you enter the book that you're reading, you can track your progress, and it gives you statistics, not only how long you've read, but also things like, you know, the, the genres you prefer the most, the authors that you've read the most of, things like that. And I, I, want, I, I like that kind of statistics because it kind of keeps you motivated. And the one of the things I like most about books, Bookly is it does kind of gamify it a little bit so you can set goals and you get, like, badges and whatever. It's, not, it's nothing, you know, useful or anything, but it gives you a, it's a, it's just a little bit more, you know, things that you can you know, pay attention to and kind of motivate you to do some reading, especially when you're in the middle of a reading this one, this one fantasy novel right now. It had the most boring fucking smut scene I've ever read in my life. Like seriously, it, you, it takes some really, I mean, we're going to go R rated here for a second, but it takes some really bad writing to write boring sex. I mean, it takes some really, really bad writing to, to write it. And this was, this was the most boring sex i've ever read in my entire life like it's just, it just was really really fucking bad and and for whatever reason this author who's writing an adult fantasy right this is not like ya where they have to like censor stuff a little bit so like you can't say you know man parts the actual words in ya right this is an adult fantasy for adults and for whatever reason this author has very much an aversion to actually using the words so they use the same euphemism over and over over again to describe certain parts of the body and god it was just so fucking repetitive his I, avocados <laughs> like, 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 oh god <laughs> like, like it's a good thing the rest of the book's actually been fairly good because that's that smut scene was just absolutely horrible so Okay, so result, no, I do not read er erotica. <laughs> this is the most dangerous uh, uh, ever. <laughs> Probably. I know, I, I can't help it, but it's serious. I've been reading books and fantasy novels sometimes have romance in them. Fucking bite me. It's, it happens, okay? Like, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. Like, I I just happen to enjoy some books that have fantasy in, or romance in them. Whatever. There's also vampires, okay? And they don't sparkle. They're like real, like, kick your ass, each eat you kind of vampires. Any. Well, I'm sorry, but if they don't sparkle, sparkle, they're not real vampires. <laughs> and also, like, who cares? Like, I want them to shine like diamonds outside. Okay. Like, yeah, what? they got the fucking Rihanna song there in the background. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for this episode. Good Lord, we that was all over the damn place, but it was fun. So if you want to watch us live, we do so again every Saturday on the Linux Cast YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Linux Cast. We uh, don't simulcast this anywhere else, by the way. So if you want to catch it, it's a YouTube exclusive because hashtag we love Google. <laughs> <laughs> mostly it's just laziness uh any, anyways that's where you can find us live every every saturday three o'clock p.m eastern time you can also find all of our contact information by heading over to the, the linux cast website which is at, available at the linuxcast.org there you'll find all of our previous episodes all the way back to season one also uh, several blog posts that i post up there I, I have several blog posts to go up there but i haven't put them up there yet but, but there are several that are already there you can why is it that every time, every week, Tyler, I get to this section of the fucking podcast and I can't fucking learn words? Like every week, like it's not, it's, it's, I, I'm perfectly eloquent and well enunciated through the entire podcast for an hour. And then I get to the contact information and, and my brain goes, fuck you, I'm tired, I'm going home. Okay. It's the, <laughs> it it's the one part where it matters. That's yeah, why I know. it's like. It, it's like your brain is doing the thing where, like, you studied so well for a test, you know all the answers, then you sit down and get the pin in your head, and then everything gets wiped yeah, in a second. I don't know what my name is anymore. <laughs> Anyways, linuxcast.org is where you'll find all that stuff. You can find Tyler, who does YouTube videos, at youtube.com slash zanyog. You can also find all of my stuff and his stuff at the linuxcast.org slash contact. There you'll find our Discord servers and our links to Mastodon and Odyssey if you're interested in that. I think my link to 
my peer tube instance that I'm uh, that I'm available on is there as well. So you can find all this stuff at the linuxcast.org slash contact. You can f- support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Tyler also has a Patreon stuff. His stuff is also linked on that page as well. Uh, so if you want to support him, you can do so from that link, uh, which I don't have memorized. One of these days, he'll actually get a URL that I can remember, and I'll pimp him out as well. That so- yeah. that sounded really, really bad. Uh, just now that I thought about it. All right. It's all right. You can pimp me out. Don't worry. There, there, there won't be any kind of charges or cases that come up against you. Don't worry. I'm not that, I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> Anyways, all that stuff available there. Give us contact. Also, if you listen to the audio version of this and you want to leave a, a review on Apple Podcasts, we'd really appreciate it. Even if you don't listen on Apple Podcasts, head on over to the Apple Podcast page, leave us a review. It really helped the channel because that's where the vast majority of people actually listen, which is, is on Apple Podcasts. So head on over there, leave us a review. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenge would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. Without you, this, this seriously, I probably wouldn't even get up in the morning just you provide motivation for me to continue that's that got really deep there for a second i don't know why anyways thanks everybody for watching we'll see you next time uh on the linux cast boy